Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Autodromo Nazionale Monza for the second race of the weekend in the FIA Formula 2 Championship. It's round 14. So there's Mirko Bortolotti, who, as you say, if he wins today, if he wins the championship, he will be the man to take the uh, full Williams F1 test at the Young Driver Test in Abu Dhabi, I think it is, at the, uh, at the end of the year. Round 14 of the 2011 FIA Formula 2 Championship is about to get underway. Out onto their green flag lap they go. My name is Jack Nichols. I'm joined here in the commentary box by Jonathan Kennard. Bortolotti on pole. That very, very distinctive car of Ramon Pinheiro alongside him. Then it's Tobias Hegevold in the black and silver car. On the right-hand side of your screen, he's in third place. Mihai Marinescu starting from the pits or possibly still with some troubles on that car. So that's a shame. But we've got the green flag raised from the back of the field. Round 14 of the championship about to get underway. The lights come on and we're away. And it's a very slow reaction from Mirko Bortolotti. Pinheiro gets a better start. Monras is up into third place already. We're all off the grid, which is good news. But Pinheiro is up the inside of Bortolotti on the run down into turn one. He gets a wheel on the grass. Is he going to be later on the brakes? Yes, he is. Bortolotti will have the outside, which will become the inside. But he's gone over the the curbing and the championship leader bounces over the curb so does Alex Brundle a little bit further back and Benjamin LaRiche so as they head through Curva Grande it's Ramon Pinheiro that takes the lead it's side by side between Timo Stortz and Mikkel Mack and they are right up behind Tobias Hegevold so it's Miki Monras holding on to that third place down to Della Roggia for the first time Monras goes defensive and uh, we've got a bit of gravel kicked up at the back that's going to be they all just about sneak through I thought Hegevold was going to be going wide over the curbs there all through the first two chicanes safely. Good work, but Ramon is away in the lead. Yeah, he, his initial getaway, as you said, it was uh, much, much better than uh, Mikko Bortolotti's. Um, and then uh, obviously kept it to the inside for, for the first part of the chicane and uh, gave uh, Mirko absolutely no room for the left. So uh, a good start from him. And we also saw uh, Alex Brundle on the grass on the way into turn one. So. Um, he did well to hang on to that, I think. Zanella has had a shocker of a start. He's down behind Plame Kralev. We'll have to see exactly where that is. Mikkel Max out of shape. He's skating across the gravel. Where's he going to come back on the circuit? He picks up a bit of air, sneaks back on at the exit of Ascari. Alex Brundle goes past him as they all exit Ascari and down towards the right-hander at Parabolica. But it's Pinheiro out in the lead. Stortz has got past Hegevold then, up into fourth position as well. Bacetta, therefore, is in sixth with Jack Clark in seventh place as Snegarev sends one up the inside of Snooks. Has Snooks seen him? Yes, he has. Great late move from Max Snegarev to take that position. And this is fantastic racing. There's Zanella, look, just ahead of Julian Theobald. So we'll see exactly what position that is. But it's Pinheiro, Bortolotti, Monrath, Stortz, Hegevold, Bacetta, Clark, Brundle, Snegarev and Snooks as they cross the line. Uh, it is 14th position for Christopher Zanella as Stortz continues to battle with Tobias Hegebold. And Snooks is back past, actually. Uh, he got a nice uh, big toe down the main straight after getting a, a reasonable exit from the Parabolica. So it's all happening all the way down the field. Pachetta is right back in the slipstream of Tobias Hegebold now as well. So there is Plamen Kralev, uh, just ahead, I think, of Mikkel Mack. And uh, uh, Benjamin Larice, sorry, I apologise. Here's Pachetta up the inside of... Hegevold, no, not quite, but Timo Stortz is starting to hold them all back, and they are going to lose touch with the top few runners. Hegevold's on the grass on the inside of the first Lesmo. Through he goes. Stortz tries to... Oh, they collide. Stortz slides into the gravel. He try, That's beached, and that could possibly bring out the safety car. He tried to squeeze Hegevold, but around that corner... You know it, Jonathan. It's a very difficult corner to get right. I think uh, what uh, Stortz should have done is just give him a little bit more room there because uh, Hedgeville was clearly down the inside and uh, uh, well down the inside of the car. So um, I think uh, a little bit uh, more room wouldn't have gone amiss there. Into the Ascari chicane. Julian Theobald is sending one up the inside of Tobias Hegevold. Does he make it through? No. Hegevold hangs it on around the outside. On the exit of Ascari, they come down towards Parabolica. House things at the lead. Bortolotti is right back up with Ramon Pini. It's Mickey Morris in third. So Luciano Bacetta, after having an absolutely torrid Friday, he was down towards, you know, the late teens in the practice sessions, finds himself in fourth position as they exit the Parabolica. This is a replay of Mikkel Mack getting all out of shape. He gets some big air here. I was worried he was going to come back onto the circuit in front of everyone else. And then, well, there's that incident again. Oh, Hegebold got out of shape on the inside. I think Stortz gave him enough room, but he needed to give him more just to be safe. And Bordelotti's back in the lead. So he must have got a great run down the uh, main straight out of our view but Pinheiro is going to be 
right up behind him on the way down into the second chicane. It's all going on. It is, and Monrass isn't too far behind Pinheiro either. He'll be picking a nice, uh, pick up a nice little toe there from uh, Pinheiro's car. And uh, I don't think he's quite quick enough, uh, close enough rather, into the second chicane here. But uh, these three seem to have broken away a little bit from Barchetta. And uh, after that first corner sort of scrap with Pinheiro, Bortolotti was straight back on the case with him and uh, has got the job done. He's very, very determined this weekend, is Mirko Bortolotti. I would not be surprised. We've got green flags out of here, of course, because that's where uh, he went off. Here's the replay. That's a late move, isn't it? He wasn't uh, he wasn't alongside going into that corner. No, and um, actually, it's uh, strange to see uh, Ramon Pinheiro give it away, actually. He, he probably could have easily defended that one, but maybe he wasn't expecting uh, Bortolotti to go for it. Down into the Ascari chicane. Pinheiro needs to be careful now because Miki Mares is right up behind him. It's Bacchetta. Well, look, Brundle has recovered well, hasn't he? He was a long way down the field, but he is now up into sixth place. So we've got Brits in fourth, fifth, and sixth. Hegevold and Mikkel Mack now going to work together perhaps to climb their way back up the order. Here's a replay. Oh, that's Storz heading off into the gravel. And then he Hegevold recovers. Yeah, uh, I think that's where uh, Brundle picked up, uh, obviously, a couple mm. of places right there. So that was a big help. And, uh, and uh, there we saw three abreast going into the parabolica. Mikkel Mack on the inside, Zanella on the outside, both going around Plamen Kralev. That was some excellent racing. And then have they got Hegevold right behind them? Yes, they have. The leaders storm across the line, but this is a great four-way battle. Plamen Kralev, this is the battle of a ninth place. Uh, Mikkel Mack in that ninth position. And down into the first corner they come. And Mickey Monras is very, very close to the back of Ramon Pinheiro. I think what Portolotti's managed... For second place, then. The two Catalan men, Ramon Pinheiro and... Mickey Monras head out onto the back straight in the battle for second position in round 14 of the 2011 FIA Formula 2 Championship. Borsaluti is doing exactly what he needs to do if he wants to take the championship at the end of this race. Barely a car length between them as they whiz past our commentary box down into the first corner. Oh, Zanella tried to uh, do a little dummy there, but Snegrev held his ground. Zanella's going to try and go late on the brakes around the outside. Great move from Christopher Zanella. It may not be over because Snegarev will get a good exit and he'll be tucked right in the toe. But that was a very, very good move and that's the kind of performance we've come to expect from Zanella. Down through Curva Grande into Della Roggia. Where is he going to position his car as uh, Brundle begins to think about attacking Jack Clark as well into the second chicane? And these two are, are very close. So and they will, Brundle will be eager to pass and try and catch it with Bacchetta. Oh, I thought he was sending one up the inside into Lesmo 1 there. Yeah, yeah, look very tight. That's a good scrap. Ari, and he gets the move done up into fifth position, but it's another good long run down towards the Parabolica, so Jack Clark is not going to give in that easily. Clark, who took his first win in FIA Formula 2 back at Brands Hatch earlier this year. Is he going to be close enough to make a move into the Parabolica? No, he is not. But if he bides his time, oh, when it looked like he lost, uh, it looked like the turning wasn't quite as he would have desired. They had to take two bites of it on the way into the corner. But with 14 laps to go, can Brundle now begin to close in on Luciano Bacchetta for fourth place? Well, he's certainly uh, getting through the field fairly clean, or it was as they crossed the start finish line anyway. So we'll see. Oh, Brundle's gone in deep. He's going to take a big clout of the curbs, darts between the two curbs on the re entry. So it doesn't lose him any positions. Whether the stewards will. Reckon he's gained an advantage by cutting the corner. There's, there's been no positional check. Car 5 is under investigation for cutting the chicane. So Alex Brundle, who is about to launch an attack on Luciano Bacchetta and is about to move up into fourth position. Oh, Bacchetta turned in late, tried to get the cutback, didn't quite work out. So Brundle under investigation as he battles with Bacchetta. Out onto the start, finish straight. Luciano moves to the inside. That's not the racing line. That could put Bacchetta in trouble because all four wheels over that white line is, uh, is a little bit naughty. Down into the first chicane they come. Brundle on the outside, Bacchetta on the inside. Oh, Bacchetta's moving across, just leaves Brundle enough room. I mean, these two, are, they're good mates. They, you know, they were having lunch together today, just chatting and laughing. But on the racetrack, different story. Yeah, as soon as these guys put the helmet on, as anyone else, else would be in this race, everything changes with that, with friendship. So, um, yeah, they're, they're battling really hard right now and I think Barchetta gave gave uh, Alex just enough room which is absolutely fine uh, and doing a great job both of them really. Absolutely very experienced Luciano Barchetta. He, uh, he 
Champions, Formula Palmer Audi Champions. Just kind of watching. Kelvin Schnooks is going to be kind of going under pressure from Christopher Zanella fairly soon as well. Second place battle isn't over either, so we've got plenty of stuff to happen in these remaining 11 laps. Brundle later on the brakes than Bajetta and moves up into that position. They're going to be side by side almost through Ascari. Brilliant race between these two out onto the back straight, running uh, nicely. What's Brundle going to do? Looking in his mirrors, is he going to go defensive? No, he's going to stick to the outside line. Bacchetta doesn't fancy a lunge at this point. But he'll take a nice wide line into Parabolica. Try and get the... Miki Monras going up the inside uh, of Ramon Pinheiro into the second chicane, but Pinheiro fights back and moves through into the inside of the first Lesmo. So Ramon Pinheiro holds on to that second place, but this battle is well and truly on. Monras super close, half a car length, a little bit sideways on the exit of the second Lesmo. Down towards the Scurry they come, they've got a clear gap back to that fourth position battle which is currently being held. There is our race leader, Mirko Bortolotti, down into the Ascari chicane, comes this battle for second place. No, he's not. Pinheiro has it covered, but is Monras going to be able to get an overlap on the outside? Yes, he is. Pinheiro squeezes him. Almost contact. Almost surely contact. Monras flies across the runoff area, comes back on behind Pinheiro. Now, oh, that, that's going to be a difficult one to call. Perversely, this may work in Monras' favour because now he could take that run-up we were talking about. Well, absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure it's not quite the way he wanted to do it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, And uh, Brundle's not actually that far away from uh, Monras as well as a result of that. But uh, I think... I, mean, I don't know quite why he's putting his car in that position because Pinheiro was always going to squeeze him a little bit. Um, you know, he was never really going to go around the outside of him there, I don't think. So, uh, slightly strange positioning on the uh, corner entry there. Final time. This battle for second place still rages down into Ascari. So, Parabolica is going to be the final chance. It's another lockup for Ramon Pinheiro. The final chance for Mickey Monras to take second place is going to be into the Parabolica but Mirko Bortolotti heads into the Parabolica for the final time and he is going to surely exit to take the 2011 FIA Formula 2 Championship. The Italian wins on home soil and sees the chequered flag and becomes the third Formula 2 champion. A fantastic victory, stamps on the brakes, Justin Wilson-esque. There's Brundle exiting the final corner. Pinheiro is going to hold on for second place just as they cross the line. Let's have a look at the classified results at the end of what really was a fantastic race around Monza for these FIA Formula 2 cars. Eight seconds is winning Mahajin, Miki Monras in third, Brundle in fourth, 9.999 seconds behind Mirko Borgiotti, I like that. Another title to add to his collection, Formula 3 Italia. He has also won and he congratulates Pinheiro. There is the championship standings, which means Christopher Zanella cannot catch up with Mirko Borzlotti, 50 points still on offer in this championship. Borzlotti has more than that in his pocket, even including drop rounds, so he is the 2011 Formula champion. The battle still on for second place. Uh, Zanella, Pinheiro, Monras all still involved. I don't know what to say right now. I'm so happy. It's been such a fantastic year for us. Um, it's been a fantastic race today, and uh, I want to thank all my guys. Uh, my mechanic, my engineer, everybody who's involved, my sponsors, uh, you guys, uh, you did a great job as well. To get to alone, you will never win. You always need a strong team behind you, and I had the good, the, the great luck to, and the pleasure to work with these guys. So I don't know what to say. I'm so happy. But today and this weekend and this season, it has been all about Mirko Portolotti straight in the Italian flag as he heads away from the 2011 FIA Formula 2.